Hello there, person. Let's check out some new stuff. Making the game Wraith Binder. There's so much to share this week. Dang. Well, I think it's because, because I've been working for a little longer than a week this time, this video. Uh, the first thing I want to share is that the boomerang now does a heat-seeking uh, thing. So when it's near enemies, it will slightly heat-seek towards them. And when it's near... Um, yeah, basically just enemies. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this right about now and see how it just barely kind of like heat seeks a little bit towards that, that creep. It'll do that every time. So that's really neat. Um, it adds a really fun element to your boomerang. And um, I've improved the way it bounces as well. So when you hit things, it doesn't quite bounce right away. So we can kind of hit a few of those little uh, pillars right there and it'll bounce after a few hits. Same thing if I just barely nick one of them, it'll fly kind of through it. Instead of uh, before, what would happen is it would bounce even on the slightest bit of damage from anywhere. So it just didn't feel as cool when you would hit this like like one little pillar right here with your boomerang and it would bounce right away. So that's nicer, the boomerang. And um, what's also improved about the whole um, ranged abilities is your bow. Your bow also heat seeks a little bit better. Now the next thing I want to start talking about is the aesthetics. So check out the background clouds. They've really been improved and I went through a lot of iterations. Let's check out some of the, the uh, iterations I've been through. This is all kind of inspired because uh, lately I've improved the shaders so that they run at 60 frames per second even on older GPUs. So there's a lot of optimizations that have gone on there. And I wanted to make sure I was getting the same quality of GIFs that I was with this really great GIF. This GIF got a lot of views on Twitter and uh, there's something just kind of magic about it. This is from uh, March, April. This is from April 15th. Hey, tax day. Woo! Um, and uh, something was just kind of magical about this. So I want to make sure I, I re-achieve that or achieve that again. Um, here is sort of me playing along with... Uh, well, that's, this is uh, with uh, the new shaders and I was kind of getting some stuff, but it wasn't... There was, there was something nice about this one, too, but there's a few things that it's missing. It's not quite... The, the level of contrast is a little bit too much on the bottom of the uh, um, the blocks. It's all just kind of a bit too dark in the bottom. And then it's also a bit too light on the, on the the uh, in the background clouds. And we've also got a little bit too much um, dithering going on when it's really nice to have a little bit of... Um, hard edges on the clouds which give it sort of this retro feel so in uh, this older gif here we see we have a harder edges on the clouds we have a little bit of a deeper uh, look in the background too and um, and then I've kind of gone in uh, this is kind of with the new shaders so uh, um, there's a lot I can do with the new shaders but this is a lot like the old old version but with a lot of the new flair too so I'm gonna keep playing with it there's still some more to be done but the biggest thing about all of this is that um, I can control it all with data now so there's this in the world dot text um, all of the background clouds uh, settings can be controlled dialed in via these stuff we, I used to have blend already but now I've got this like this uh, boolean opposite which uh, check it out let's start playing around with this um, we saw here. Let's go ahead and here and load the regular battle world, and uh, actually, well, let's load the practice world. You can see the background clouds a lot better in the practice world. Let's go, uh, yeah, practice world. Um, actually, we just go load practice. Let's turn off all abilities. No, we're gonna have to turn turn that off soon. Okay, so. Yeah, here we are to start with. We have the, um, this is sort of like the style where it's matching your character's color. So you've got an orange color for your character here. And so the background is also kind of matching that. Let's go ahead and turn off that. Let's play around with some of the data things here in uh, world.txt. Turn off opposite. Opposite will make the whole screen have this sort of effect so now it's more in line with the opposite of my character's color so before it was my character's color which was orange now we've got this bluish background which is the opposite of orange the complementary color so that we so the whole screen kind of have now has this blue tinge to it 
Um, and then we can also change the clouds, whether they are opposite or not. Let's turn off clouds opposite. And this will turn the clouds back so that they're sort of orangish, but the whole screen will still have this opposite blue effect. So that's what's going on right there. Um, and then we can also change the edges so that they're opposite or not. There's a lot to be played with here, actually. Uh, I can pretty much achieve any one of these, the, those GIFs I was just sharing there. I can kind of achieve just about any look just by playing around with these settings here. We can change the saturation of the whole screen. We can change the hue range. Check this out. If I go to, let's go back to about there. And we've got a hue range of negative 90 to 90. Let's think, change the saturation a lot. You can even change the value gradient and the saturation gradient of the background. So there we got a lot of saturation in the background. Um, and oh, let's. So we've got a hue range too. The hue range is the the background's range of. So it starts with the hue of your character. Um, and then it can change them to be opposite by all those opposite settings and then it can do a range of different colors So in the bottom right we have slightly increased the range and in the top left we slightly decrease the range and You can see that better if I turn the value gradient a Little bit actually maybe it's the saturation gradient This is gonna get kind of crazy and gaudy I'm sure but we'll also illustrate the effect a little bit better Hue range negative 90 to 90. That's what I'm trying to share it with you here. That uh, there we go. Okay, so that's that's playing around with the saturation gradient. We've made it so it's much more saturated throughout the whole gradient, and uh, you can see that it you can see it better as it as we rotate the camera. You can see what's going on with that that whole gradient. In fact, if we turn up the value gradient, ah, uh, here it is. This part of the value gradient. We'll be able to see those colors a lot better because it won't be so dark. That was at point 0.1, which is really dark. The top. Of, there we go. See, there we go. This is now. Now we're starting to see a GIF that's sort of like that second GIF I was sharing before, where we have a very bright background and we have a very colorful background. The, the gradient going from greenish in the top left to per, to pink in the bottom right, and passing through orange in the middle, where you can't even really see the orange because it's being so uh, obscured by the green and the pink, um, but we can play around with that range too. So if we want to only go 30 degrees different on these colors, 30 is just uh, out of 360 degrees of color. You can think of it like degrees. So there you go. Now we've got 30 to 30 where we're barely changing it the orange. So on the top left we have yellow. In the bottom right we sort of have this reddish pink. And uh, so, so like you can just get so much variation out of the background now with data only, and I just I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. What's, what's this look like here with opposite one? I can just sit here playing all day. In fact, I've probably spent too much time on this already, but it's really neat because now I can make a world seem totally different just by changing a few settings right there. And since it's all data, and since this is supposed to be a multiplayer game, I can update data really quickly on the fly without having to change any code. So I can push that out to people as an update and be like, hey, check it out, here's a new world. Um, I can play around with a few different models to change uh, the artwork and then play around with the background a lot and get a totally different look out of just the same code. Very cool. So the last thing I wanna share here is that the tutorial has been started. This is great to have this uh, finally going. Um, I've been thinking about doing this for a long, long time and uh, very, very glad to have this whole tutorial started. Uh, basically, the, the story of this is that I started with a practice world. I wanted to be able to have a world where, um, or, a, or a mode of learning Wraithbinder where you had no hand holding going on whatsoever, kind of like Songbringer. The spirit of Songbringer was, let's don't hold the player's hand at all. Let them explore, let them find their own way, let them fall on their face if they have to, to learn how to play this game. Um, but with Wraithbinder, it's a little bit different because you're being thrown into PvP battles against other players online where you've got tons of abilities needed to know how to use. So we do need some kind of tutorial world, and I'm calling this the training world. So this is the beginning of the training world. 
and uh, I sort of just have an obstacle course sort of laid out where it takes you from uh, one thing to another and basically gets you to learn how to play Wraith Binder one little step at a time. And what's kind of fun about this is it actually uses items to do that. So you actually pick up your life meter. So there's the first thing you get is like, oh, sweet, I got the life meter. And now, and it kind of rewards you instead of, instead of being like a normal tutorial where it's boring and you're like, I don't want to play this. This is stupid. I hate tutorials. It's fun because you're like, let's go find some items and learn how to play this game. You don't, you don't even know that you're learning at this point. You're just picking things up and exploring in a way. It's not like you're really exploring that well because it's one little laid out for you path, but it, it, it gets, it does the job. So as you pass by, um, you start with half health, and as you pass by this mender here, it tells you about menders and how they heal you. And then you're gonna get this little thing right here. This is a little, uh, an arrow trap. I'm actually gonna step on a little block right there in the middle. See how that, that block in the middle is um, raised a bit? That's a trigger for these little arrow traps. I'm gonna take some damage here. And it's gonna explain to me, oh, hey, you're taking some damage. And then over here, we got the, the blade. So you pick up the blade. And it explains to press the F button in this case to use the sword um, on your gamepad. Of course, that would be like X or whatever. Uh, and there's a little dummy here, so you can hit this thing and practice using your sword. And then it progresses on with the rest of the tutorial. So this is about as far as I've got. But this is where you get your matter meter. And you, oh, now I have the matter meter. Whoa, what's that gonna do? The next thing you're gonna learn how to use matter, how to harvest matter what abilities use matter, etc. So you kind of just walk this path along here and you learn all your abilities. This is, I really haven't done, gotten anything more done except for um, the, oh gosh, the data driven, shoot, this is pretty neat. I, was, I wanted to show you the mini map there, but I don't have the mini map item yet. You actually pick up the mini map, uh, but I'll show you in data what's going on here in the background. This is really neat because uh, it allows me to create worlds with just data. Right now, so far, I've just been doing procedurally generated worlds, but now I could actually create stuff from data because I wanted the tutorial to be the same every time. You walk the same path every time. It's always got the same items in the same order. So this is what I've created here. This is a map. This is a called map training a text. You can set your region size for your uh, the entire overall world. You can set the screen size of each of each screen in those regions um, and then we've got sort of different layers going on so this is the height layer this is the background layer here's the underground layer the objects layer the walls layer and the above ground layer these uh, these ones that are shorter so far are ones that I was I had sort of like mocked up and planned out but I never really have used yet they really the only two of you I'm using so far are underground and objects and that's why these are bigger right here they're twice the size that they need to be so that they can incorporate a little bit of data so every one of these two characters represents one uh, sort of part of a screen in the world itself so B is your base that's where you start at and uh, it's up its complementary character is empty but when you have things like I here's an I and an S I stands for item S stands for sign uh, like a signpost type of sign um, and uh, there's a number next to each one of these so there's a little bit of data that can be embedded in each one so this is item number two which is your your life meter this is sign number two which talks about uh, getting healed by a mender and that, this way I can Im I can embed this data into the actual data file and I can play around with changing all that like in fact let's check this out if I change this to item four instead of two we would be picking up the experience bar, I think. Let's see what that. Let's see if that's what that is. Yeah, that's the experience bar. So we go. Oh, what experience bar? Sweet. You can get experience now. So, um, and then you, there also there's the uh, cool animation when you pick up items. I forgot to talk about that. That was something I had in in the game for a long, long time. Uh, but removed because you haven't been working on the ship as much lately but now since we've got this fun way to get items and learn in the tutorial um, it's nice to bring back that animation again let's see that animation one more time I love it inspired by Songbringer so this is kind of in Songbringer when you pick up your courage uh, your demons teeth you get one more more um, bar of courage and uh, which is your life force basically or your health 
hit points. And in uh, Wraithbinder, um, there you just use hit points or life force or whatever. I'm not sure exactly what to call it yet. But um, what was I talking about all that for? Oh, let's just watch this animation. See that? Sweet. Could probably be a little sweeter. Maybe I'll work on making it even better. Um, maybe maybe the player should rise up into the air a little bit or do some other kind of two-dimensional animation or something else cool. We'll see. So, that's it for this time. Making the game Raidbinder. Thanks for watching this video, person. I appreciate you. Talk to you next time.